Yeah. 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 Welcome. Uh, we do have a sign-up sheet that I hope we can pass around so that the people who are in the audience can sign so we know who's here. That'd be great. Thank you very much. Uh, this is a meeting of the Woodstock Economic Development Commission, so if you expect it to be in a different meeting, this is your time to actually say thank you and see you later. And enjoy the great outside. Um, so we'll be meeting for about an hour and a half. That's the expectation. And we have a lot of items on our agenda. Uh, for those that are at home and in attendance, we don't have name tags uh, in front of us to identify us, so I'd like to go down the table, starting with Courtney, and please introduce yourself. Courtney Lowe. Anything else? Yeah, that's, that's, pretty, that's pretty good. <laughs> Michael Malik. <coughs> Joe DiNatale. Julia Cook. Charlie Kimball. John Spector. Larry Niles. I'm Sally Miller. I'm uh, the coordinator, not on board member. Thank you very much. Um, and we do have an opening for citizen comments where we generally accept citizen comments. I want to uh, first put a, a preview that we are going to be discussing the EDC objectives, which we discussed at our May 13th meeting on item five. Uh, so we're not going to be taking, uh, if you want to have a discussion about those, please wait until then. If there's any other comments, uh, we'd love to hear them. And then after the comments, we'll be going over the minutes uh, from our May 2nd and May 13th meeting, and then also brief grant presentations from the people from whom we've received grant applications. And there's supposed to be just a five minute overview of what the grant application is, and then we spend the next 30 days actually going into greater depth of them with our committee. So that's kind of what we're looking at for the day. Um, hopefully that lines up with expectations. So our open up to citizen comments. Do we have any comments from citizens today? Yes. I just wanted to uh, identify yourself. I'm sorry, I'm Beth Finlayson. I'm the director of the uh, Chamber of Commerce and just wanted everyone to know that Wassel Weekend was again named a top 10 winter event in the state of Vermont last week. Great. So, yes. Yeah. So, that's good for everyone. Fantastic. Any other citizen comments? Anything? Okay, we will move on quickly through our agenda then. Uh, do we have any additions to or deletions from the posted agenda? Board members, anything? It says Mr. Cook on that one. Oh, that's on the minutes. Yeah, we'll get minute, to that sorry. in a minute, yeah. Yeah. Anything <laughs> else from the posted agenda? Okay, we'll move on to <laughs> item number three, and that's the approval of minutes from May 2nd. Uh, I think uh, Mr. <laughs> Malik oh. has uh, pointed out that Mr. just needs an S. <laughs> Unless you want it, Mr. Which is okay. Well, that might be Mr. Cook. Okay. So. This is Mr. Cook. Mr. Cook. Are there any other corrections to the uh, minutes of May 2nd? Give me May 2nd. Okay, why don't we just go into the minutes of May 13th and then we'll take one motion to approve both sets of motion of minutes. Are there any comments, additions, deletions to May 13th? Seeing none, we will bring, uh, entertain a motion to approve the minutes for both May 2nd and May 13th. Motion. Second. Made, made by Courtney and seconded by Dr. Malik. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. And we move on to our grant presentations. So we have uh, A through I, which is approximately 12 <coughs> applications. Uh, and the first we have is Abigail Zense Skin Care Expansion. We've received an application from Abigail. So come on up and just. This is an opportunity to give us an overview of what you're doing. This is not in depth, but uh, we can ask you some basic questions. Very okay. basic. Hello, everybody. Hello. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, as you know, I've had a successful luxury facial spa in Woodstock for four and a half years. And I'm looking to expand that to a two room facial spa. And um, I'll be hiring two <coughs> estheticians who will be moving to Woodstock. One of them I already hired. And um, they also will be working in Woodstock and living in Woodstock. So I think that was two of the criteria on the list. Um, and just looking for a small grant request to help aid in that transition. So could you remind us the grant request is for what dollar amount? Uh, 14129 And the location that you're moving into? The suite adjacent to the one that I already uh, have 
At 5 Central Street. Yeah. So, but downstairs or? It's not Central Street, it's actually. Oh, sorry. 5 Green. 5, <laughs> five, Green, yeah. five North Park Street or whatever it is. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Great. Well, that's a quick overview. Yes. Um, you have specific uh, articles you want to spend this money on? Um, yes, and I did include, um, I gave Sally a binder, mm -hmm. if that, that yep. might be it. Um, I mean, the commissioners also have all the full applications and a drop box. So. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I have all of the specific breakdown of equipment, um, decor, supplies, everything that would, it's a full business plan for that space. Total cost of the project, uh, according to your application, is thirty-nine thousand seven twenty-nine, um, with the grant request of fourteen thousand. That exactly. still sound right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Does the grant request does the fourteen thousand include the, uh, the and are you applying for the storefront incentive? Um, I think I will be um, doing that next. Yes. Okay, but it's not included in this. Not included in this. And the, ten, the landlord is? Um, it's run by LOA Properties, no, but the landlord, okay. No, they, they, they gave it to somebody else to run. It's owned by LCAM. LCAM. Okay. LCAM Realty. Yep. Okay. Yep. Great, do we have any other <coughs> questions for Abby? Is there anything else you want to add? I think it's great that you're expanding. Congratulations, that's Thank wonderful you. to see. Yeah. yeah. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, and then we have a next presentation from Gallery on the Green Sunday Jazz. Is Opal, are you here for it? All right. I am here. Thank you. Dan's not with you. It was, uh, was huh? it Dan Webb. Dan is not here no, okay. Today. Okay. I think they're a bit <clears throat> of a distance from here. So, um, uh, most of you probably know last year we did our first full summer of Gallery on the Green, but we had a monthly event plus a couple of extras through the summer month. And um, so I think we did it the first Sunday. I'm not 100% sure, frankly. But this year we would like to expand that to, and by the way, EDC did grant us some funds last year to get that going for advertising and for also pay some of the musician costs. And then uh, Encore um, uh, Gear Traders and Gallery on the Green paid the balance uh, of that total budget. And this year we're asking for expanded um, funding because we are going to expand the program. We're going to have it uh, eight definite dates that are already being advertised in the windows on Woodstock. And we will be advertising it ourselves through social media and various means. And, but we would like to be able to have it every Sunday. And we've already had one event, even though uh, I guess it was sort of, uh, it wasn't literally in the permit, but it was submitted in the permit, but the permit hasn't been finalized yet. But I got the idea that there was not going to be an issue with approving the permit for the entire summer and for every Sunday. And the total budget for that is $4,410 and uh, includes $2,800 for the concerts, $1,200 for, for the pre-scheduled concerts, $1,200 for the extemporaneous concerts because we're going to have smaller uh, groups or maybe only one or two musicians who are playing jazz on those Sundays. And then we also have $300 in communications cost as well as a $110 permit. And we're requesting the grant for $2,205 to cover half of our costs for the summer. Percent. And then, uh, but the two businesses are kicking in the difference? It's really three businesses. Three businesses. Yeah, okay. where all the businesses are kicking in the difference, yes. Okay. And any right. other costs that should we should occur we, or incur, we will definitely pick up those costs as well. Okay, correct. Just as we did last year. Any questions for Opal? <clears throat> no? Okay. Great, thank right. you. And thank it you. Will, it'll happen anyway, but we would really love to have some funding. Uh, and um, of course, everybody is requested to come to the event. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Great music. What was it last weekend? Thank you. Yeah, great. Okay, thank you. Well, we're just sprinting right along. Uh, GMHA Water Fountains. So, so, who is here from GMHA? Uh, Lisa Nicolai. Come on up. <laughs> okay. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Um, so basically, um, 
GMHA, as you probably all know, has been here since the 20s. Um, every year, about 10,000 people at least come up to compete uh, and participate in competitions there. Um, I've been coming up here since I was probably 12 and always told, don't drink the water. Um, so it's always been, it's been a long-term problem. Uh, there's plenty of water for the horses. There is potable water, but there's not, it's not easily accessible. So there's a lot of disposable water bottles that get used. And so a very simple solution to that would be to have some, if you've been to the airport, they have those water fountains you hold a refillable water bottle under, fills your water bottle, and you're off, off you go. So, um, I'm on a committee this year, and we just thought that would be a really simple solution, reduce a lot of waste, um, and provide potable water for the competitors and visitors who are there. It's fairly... So what's the total cost of the project? About $5,000. Okay. And then the grant application is for... $3,000. $3,000, $3, okay. Yeah. What, what about the water that now is what, from a well? That now you were told not to drink from that, is that it? Well, there's, <coughs> I'm not entirely sure how the plumbing works, but there's a lot of water for horses. So, right. you know, it's just, they, it's just not suitable for people. There are at least one well that is tested regularly that is potable for human consumption, but the buildings are old and they're, it's just hard to find faucets in areas where you could get the water. So they've always just said, don't drink the water. So, uh, how many years ago was it that GMHA commissioned an economic impact study? Well, it's about 10 years ago now. And the dollar amount was? Four and a half. Four and a half million a year, right? Yeah. Yeah. Four and a half million. So, a pretty big impact to the community mm -hmm. um, from people locally and from farther away. Yeah. I'm just going to double check that number. <coughs> yep. Yeah. Sorry to ask this question in this maybe pointed yeah. way, but I if you didn't have this, do you think fewer people would come, or if you did have it, do you think more people would come? Um, I think really what the focus of this is reducing the dependency on disposable bottles, right. because they're, they get left around, they become trash, they end up in the stream, they flow down. Um, I'm not sure that it would, that a visitor would necessarily know that until they went looking for something to drink and right. had to go buy it. Um, is GMJ not in a position to be able to build for a goodwill? I'm sorry, what? Is G GMJ not in a position to drill for a good wall? well? No, they have a good well. It's uh, just there's no... another one? There's no access. I mean, there's there's like faucets, but they're kind of tucked away in back buildings so or it's a in the plumbing other issue, is that it? It's just an accessibility issue when you have that many people coming to the facility. Um, I guess when they were, yeah, it's infrastructure. Yeah. There's like little kitchen offices, but. Um, I think, it's, you know, the only issue I have is you're still going to be using plastic bottles. Well, hopefully they much. would be the reusable ones, so yeah. they get more than one use. Uh, that's that's the, what they're trying to get away from. You know, there's one right there, you know, refillable bottles. People carry them all the time now, so. Um, that's that's the intent. Right, thank you. Is there a way that um, the town of Woodstock, as an environmentally conscious place, why don't you come live here? That kind of message could be associated with this project. Uh, I think so, definitely. Um, I know from sort of hearsay, we got some support from local realtors who have definitely seen people who come to the GMHA, fall in love with the area, and buy homes, um, or become permanent residents or second homes. Um, we could definitely tie that into this project and identify uh, support from the community for providing a, a service. I think that would be, we'll be doing a lot of promotional, um, when any visitor comes to the property, they have to check in at the office and they get a packet of information. Um, and so the idea would be to put information in that packet, uh, explaining the new, you know, available places to get uh, easy to drink water. Um, so we can sort of identify, hey, you know, here's some resources to learn more about Woodstock or visit the greater area or things like that. So, so I, I don't want to prolong this anymore. Have to, but the water stations will be consistent of what? Like a water cooler in somebody's office with a big bottle at the end? Or is that it? Oh. Um, I, I don't know if you've, s there, there's a lot of them at airports now. They look sort of like um, water fountains, but they just have a 
sort of hold your your refillable yeah. thing underneath. Yeah, big stainless kind of. Yeah, big stainless steel thing, yeah. and it would be you know on the outside of a building or on a covered porch or someplace where it would be. Yeah, you there's a picture of it right there. You just you have to refill those guys. Uh, no, it's plumbed no. in. No. It's oh, plumbed, plumbed in, in to the well, yeah. and then yeah. you just bring So they are creating the infrastructure. <laughs> oh, so this is like a one-shot deal. Not gonna, next year, you're not going to require these things again. No, right. no, no. I this is this is a long-term. Oh, okay. uh, I get the impression you're going to put a big gallon jug just to go. Well, that's sort of the last resort. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I hope not. So. You should stick your head in the trunk. I don't think you're mad. So. I have done that. Yeah, so. <laughs> okay, so are there any further questions for Lisa? <laughs> From the commission. Thank you. Thank Great. You. Thank you very much. Thank you. And now we have Pentangle matching grant. So, uh, Lita, are you all right? Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you all. Um, looks like we've got a somewhat new committee. Um, in April, I requested a grant from the Dorothy Burke, uh, Dorothy Jack and Dorothy Burke Foundation uh, for programming, um, and and as a footnote, said that we have some some vital needs for upgrades to the interior of the theater and specifically for our sound and technical sound and lighting equipment. She gave us a $30,000 grant which was lovely for programming and an addendum said um, if you can raise 50000 I will match you um, for upgrades to the interior of the theater and to your technical and sound equipment. Um, so that is why I'm here. 50-50 match? 100% match? Yeah. Um, some of you might ask, why not replace the seats, the main drape, the carpet, and put all of those things in the grant application, which you've seen are not in it. Part of that is because there is structural work that is being done on the town hall. Um, so a more realistic thing for Pentangle is to upgrade sound and lighting equipment that where we have to move could go with us, which we obviously <coughs> don't anticipate, um, but we obviously don't want to be pulling up seats and carpets and stuff while the exterior of the building still needs work. Um, why would this grant generate economic growth for the community? Since I started this job in the fall of 2014, I worked hard to integrate Pentangle Arts into the fabric of the community. That means ensuring doors are open to our schools, our nonprofits for their events and programs at minimal cost. I forge partnerships with area businesses that are mutually beneficial and produce and pre present programs that attract folks to the village who purchase tickets to our events, who also shop and dine in the area. Here are some statistics. The 170 patrons who attended our live musical production of Magic School Bus June 1st at 10 a.m. came from 17 towns outside of Woodstock, 11 towns <coughs> in New Hampshire. 90% of those attendees had never been into the town hall. The 386 patrons who bought tickets to the Natalie Merchant concert, which is a rental, which sold out in two hours, um, are from 21 states, the UK, and Canada. 1,500 patrons who attended our spring 2018 production of Hair came from 11 states, 40 Vermont towns, from Essex down to Bellows Falls and everywhere in between. The Shire on the River, Bentley's, The Worthy Kitchen, Richardson's Tavern all benefited for the sh from the show for cast housing, après show dinners and drinks, and rooms for patrons staying in the village. Can Pentangle continue to offer a diverse and engaging programs without this investment? For a time, yes. Um, but what we really need to do for, for the town and for us is to increase capacity. If we don't add and diversify programming every year, we won't remain competitive with other venues such as the Grange, Northern Stage, the Engine Room. To attract more big, big rentals such as Natalie Merchant and have a return we can leverage for future shows, we need to bring down our labor costs and simultaneously raise flat rate rental of our state-of-the-art equipment, which of course we don't have. Even the touring companies <coughs> we present for our school age audiences are now asking for sound and light equipment we simply don't have, which means we have to rent and we have to charge more or we make less. Most if not all area houses use union labor, which starts at 33 per hour for a stage hand and goes up to 35.50 for a crew chief with a four hour minimum. Automation of the soundboard and lighting plot, we are flipping switches, not lowering light fixtures, changing the plot before a show, and then paying them again to restore the plot, 
reduces the cost of Pentangle for our own production and is more attractive to rentals who would have to cover those costs, those hourly costs. So with that, I just say, I think it's in the interest of the town, it's the interest of Pentagle that, that we get, get our game up and continue more program and better program to bring people into the village. Great, thank you, Alita. Uh, questions for <coughs> Alita? <coughs> I just want to clarify one thing. That, um, so you're, you're basically saying that an upgrade to the sound equipment and lighting will enable you to attract gigs like Natalie Merchant or like slightly higher profile or perhaps more recognized. So, so we, we have Natalie Merchant, but our ability to charge, uh, we can't charge in a normal rental contract. You would charge for your sound and lighting equipment. We can't because ours is so outdated that it, they will come in and laugh at us. So, so it makes the theater a competitive place. Right. So, so basically, we will bring you know 400 people, 386 for Natalie Merchant, and the rental contract that we have, we will not make. I mean, we have the potential to make more, which leverages us for future shows. But with the equipment that we have, um, our rental, you know, we just we we normally would charge you know a couple hundred for use of the sound and light, but now that, that those those that that equipment is somewhat obsolete, um, we really can't charge for that. So you're going to be able to increase the type of or upgrade the, the, the people that can come in and perform. Well, what we can do with more? what we can do with a contract is we can tell them your labor will be less because our equipment is more sophisticated yeah, oh, I see. and. I see. We can charge more if we have more automated systems that are more flipping switches as opposed to the jury rig system that we have now. I see. Great approach. Oh, well, Lita, we had an informal conversation about this a month ago, and I thought you said at the time, this is related to Julia's question, I thought you said at the time that there were, you know, from time to time, maybe once or twice a year, maybe three times a year, there were people who wanted to come who didn't come because we didn't have this kind of equipment, and that therefore we'd be able, it's not just that we would get the same number of shows, but we could charge $200 more, but that there were certain, we'd probably get a few more shows each year that, that would we, rent the place. We would definitely get a few more shows um, just because, again, the mm -hmm. labor cost. Right. But when we give them, most everybody in Upper Valley now is using union labor. And when they have to lower the, the, the racks for lighting, um, they look at that and go, well, 36.50 per hour for the crew chief and 33 for the stagehands. Yeah, it's not. It's, we'll go somewhere else. They'll go somewhere else. Yeah, thank you. Any other questions from the commission? Mm -hmm. thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, now we have the Thompson Senior Center and the town of Woodstock Fireworks is on deck. So. <laughs> and then uh, Vermont Kitchen Country, Vermont Kitchen Commercial Kitchen is in the hall. fireworks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm Deanna Jones, I'm the director from the Thompson Center, and I'm here to talk about home sharing here. Um, so as a way of introduction, in case there's anyone that hasn't really been familiar with home sharing, I think you know the most famous and fun example is the Golden Girls and Betty White, and certainly you know the you know social and emotional impact it had on, on those ladies and one of their mothers. Um, that's a popular demographic for a home sharing type of arrangement, um, but far less famous and um, a personal uh, connection for myself is on the opposite end of the spectrum when I was in college and. Um, struggling with uh, the finances of, at all. The, the second half of my college, uh, the Dean of Women uh, connected me with an older woman and it was a mutually beneficial relationship. She knew both of us well and it saved me thousands of dollars in tuition and allowed me to stay right in town and gave a lot of peace of mind to the older woman that I stayed with and her <coughs> daughter uh, who was in Buffalo, New York, you know, about 15 hours away. So um, a home share arrangement is specifically not a caregiver arrangement, but certainly homemaking <coughs> uh, types of jobs can be included in lowering the cost that the home seeker would share to, uh, or to contribute um, to the family or the, the person. 
Um, and at that time, when, when I was in that arrangement, there wasn't organizations like there are now, hundreds around um, the, the country. In Vermont, there's Home Share Vermont up near Burlington, and Home Share Now, which is located in Barrie, and closer to us with matches even as close as Sharon. Um, they're not able to expand their own footprint with their current budget and staffing, but are thrilled to be working with the Thompson, um, with one of our goals being to help people to age at home safely where they want to be. And um, the, the plan would be for the Thompson to help facilitate and become satellite location of the home share now. So we would not be recreating the program from, from scratch. We would be using their model, um, customizing their material. Um, part of the grant request is to help us with legal fees to make that a formal partnership with Home Share Now, help us um, convert the material and website development, and then the marketing and outreach. Um, we've had a kickoff meeting um, that included Vital Communities and the Mount Escutney um, Housing uh, Health Impact Team, and there's great enthusiasm for it. Um, a local example of interest is the National Parks and the park rangers who they're looking for seasonal housing <coughs> for. Um, they're interested in partnering with us. Uh, there's a great, great deal of interest. Um, for the long term, um, I would expect that the amounts that, you, there is an amount that can be charged, um, I think they average around $300 for um, facilitating a match because it would be Thompson staff and volunteers that would do the interviewing of each, conduct the background checks, and help facilitate the match conversation and the agreement as to what is part of it. Um, one thing that we see every year is, you know, an, an older person living in a home alone that might be looking for someone to shovel their walks. And that example of a you know, park ranger staying there for a lower, you know, fee than they might somewhere else um, and shoveling the walkway. It's just sort of, you know, that idea is, is exactly what we're trying to accomplish. Um, we feel that it really does meet the goals of the um, EDC, you know, particularly impro um, improving and making the best use of buildings and other physical Infrastructure, it gives the opportunity to use existing housing stock and home more people. Um, so um, the total project, um, we're looking at a pilot period of two years, and the, um, we're asking for half of what the anticipated project budget is, of around $15,000. So our request is $7,689. Great, thank you. And uh, do you have any idea of how many people you could place in homes sure. given this two-year program and the yeah. pilot? Um, I included that, and I have to credit Roger Logan, who is traveling and not able to be here, but um, he was an enormous help with the mapping out of this project and the project plan. And there's a, a in your material, there's a grid of two years and the number of matches. Um, as an example, Home Share now had 99 matches last year, um, active matches, people living in homes. Um, so, and their annual budget is around 250,000. So ours would be on a smaller scale, but we're anticipating one match a month, um, ev almost every month, not December, you know, for the holidays. Um, we figure just, um, but that's, that's our goal. Okay. So our, because we have an existing structure, existing building, existing staff, um, our per match cost would be much lower than theirs running an operation that just does this. The questions from? Oh, I'm sorry, there's a state grant too available? Um, there is state funding that goes to home share now okay. um, through the Department of um, Disabilities, Aging, and Independent Living. But they do a lot of fundraising as well. Um, okay. We we feel that the this would be our only request uh, for this project through to the EDC. Um, there is, like I said, based on the income of the people in the match, there's a sliding scale for um, 
the background checks and that kind of thing. So mm -hmm. they could pay us three hundred dollars to make a match. I'd like to waive that for all the, you know, the first matches that we make, and that would be part of the incentive. Um, but then, and once we were up and really running, um, that would help us with the other fifty percent of the project budget, um, along with our own <coughs> capacity for <coughs> fundraising um, and other grants. Great. All right. Yeah. Um, have you done an informal discussion with the people at the Thompson Center? See how many. And maybe you already said this. Yeah. And I didn't catch it. Um, well, so for about mm -hmm. about the last year, I've been sharing articles on Facebook about this Golden Girls idea and other um, articles, and I have. Um, we already have a, a information list going of people that are interested in being. Home seekers. I have a woman um, in North Carolina who used to live here who's ready to come back as soon as we have a home sharer for her. Um, she lived in a home share situation in Denver and, um, you know, is just waiting for us. I have several examples like that. Um, but we did an aging at home survey at the end of 2016, and housing and being able to maintain one's home was one of the very top. Um, you know issues that people were concerned about in the future, and yeah. we we have a um, community stakeholders group that we um, bounce ideas off of and use sort of as a focus group, and they've been um, part of this conversation as well. Thank you. Uh, is there an age range for the home share? Um, in the home share now model, um, the there's typically one older person, and more commonly someone you know, in their 30s or 40s. Um, there are home share matches where it's um, two older people that were just living home alone and combined households to have one. Um, there are even some family home shares. Um, so it's, it would be all ages. It's a multi-generational project. How do you define older? <laughs> I never define <laughs> 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 How many of us qualify here? Anyone have an extra room? <laughs> <laughs> Great, thank you, Deanna. Thank uh, you so much. Thank you. Thank, you. thank you. All right, now we have uh, Town of Woodstock Fireworks. Do we have Mary presenting on behalf of the town? Well, not really on behalf of the town, on behalf of the July 4th Celebration Committee. Okay. Which is not. It's not affiliated all, with the town. Of course it is. Of course it is. <laughs> but um, it's a committee and it is not all town employees. Okay, so tell us what's going on. Okay. So um, after a 4th of July without fireworks one year, for the last 20 or so, we have hosted a fireworks display. And um, 4th of July night, and um, we started doing that by seeking donations from businesses, et cetera. Um, the price is quite high to do a fireworks display, and there's entertainment and other costs, which are all included in the yep, budget yep. that I submitted to you. And um, this year, donations are not coming. The last few years, donations are not coming like they once were. We could at one time get about $6,000, and now, as you can see, we're under $5,000 with what we have taken in. And um, as businesses sell and um, interests change, the donations for fireworks has decreased significantly. And there is an amount in the budget um, that the select board puts in every year, and that's the town contribution to fireworks. And there are a lot of other expenses there too related. For instance, um, the entertainment people must be paid, and they require a tent and a stage to protect their equipment, and the related costs to that which I give you a budget of, I think, 13, seven, 13 775, uh, yes. yep, yep. And um, we have the uh, 7,500 from this, the budget that was approved in March. Sorry, what and was that? 7,500 from the budget, yeah. Thir so the request is 13,770, no, I'm sorry, the total budget is 13,775. Yep. 
Sorry. And our request is four thousand. Yeah. You privately raised, how, how much have you privately raised for Well, this year, um, privately, we, we at one time raised another five or six thousand dollars. That has gone away, and I think now we're about four thousand. Or is it twenty two? Two, two, two is missing from the right. seven and a half plus the four plus yeah. two. Yeah. Well, the four thousand. We're asking for four thousand. Yes. Right. So seven thousand from the town, four thousand from us, two thousand from someone else. Twenty-four fifty, I think, is what we have this year for donations. That ends up to the top. So far, that's right. That's right. Hmm. And you know, people make a donation when they enter, but the entrance is controlled by the Spectrum Teen Center, so they get the money from that. Uh, um, VV, VS. <coughs> The volunteer services for animals as another um, kiosk in there, and they have games and things for children. And they supply, they set up their little kiosk, and then they take what is ever made there. And any organization or nonprofit or group, the alumni does the grill, they provide the food, and they take the proceeds from that as well. So whoever sets up a booth, mm -hmm. they in turn take what they earn from that. And that is our request for it this year. And um, we're hoping you'll consider it. I'm curious how, um, how you're raising the money, fought privately. All right, um, in about mid-March, 15 to 20 letters have always gone out. And then- That um, married at what, just to businesses? Or is it, or? What? Businesses, a couple of banks, and the, the bank contributions, we have one this year that's been promised, but we haven't seen it yet. And after the letters are out for about two or three weeks, we start to make phone calls and say, did you get, your letter? Did you get our letter? What do you think? And people sometimes say, we're not going to do it this year. Oh, yes, we'll be sending you a donation. And... Um, a lot of them have gone away completely, and many others are cut in half or even less than that. And um, what the determination is, one organization that used to give us $1,000 isn't owned locally anymore. So we get, the last time we got a donation from them, it was 250 and we're getting nothing this year. A bank at one time gave us $1,000, and um, all the names are posted on the poster. All the donors are posted, are listed here. And that bank is no longer locally owned, and that has changed. So that is what has happened to the donations. And this year we sent a lot of letters to new businesses, and the response was not overwhelming. I just remember those non-locally owned banks are still interested locally, so you should probably keep that in mind. Oh, I, yeah, oh, yeah, believe me. But you see, the are. individual locally yeah. who we call and say, um, yeah. did you get the letter? Are you interested? Yes, I'd love to do it, but it has to go to the corporate office. And those responses do not come back as positive as they once did. Yeah, right. I have more questions for you separately than on the same subject. I okay. ask about. You want some pizza? <coughs> I'm sorry? He wants pizza. Yeah, cheese. Any other questions for Mary about this? Thank you. Uh, I'm just worried about timing. I know. Because <laughs> 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 I just heard you say 30 days. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. All right. That's, that's Fourth of July is four weeks from this what, evening. It's a hard what time. Stop. What yeah, time yeah. are the fireworks? <laughs> <laughs> right after dark. <laughs> Five no, after dark, that's actually, about right. Actually, about 9.30, they send up a couple, and then it gets a little darker. So by about a quarter of 10 or so, it's full blast. Mayor, you realize, of course, the select, select one is going to have to approve this. I know that. Okay. I'm just curious if you knew that. Our next meeting is June 18th, and after that's July 15th. So it might be a cash flow issue. But yeah. All right. We'll take that in. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Mary. Okay, so we have, uh, next is the Vermont Kitchen Commercial <laughs> Kitchen. Did I get that right? Yep. Kitchen yes, okay, great. Kitchen. And then yeah. on deck is the nursery school, and in the hole is TV commercials. Yeah. 
Hello. Great. Hello. Hi. I'm Caroline. Um, my husband and I just moved up to Woodstock about a year ago from Terrific. the Boston area. Nice. And um, we also have a business called Nutty Light Cash and Milks. So we're sold locally and we're in about 50 stores in New Hampshire, Vermont, and Massachusetts. What do you sell? Cash and milk. Yeah. Um, and we just got into a store in Connecticut, too. So I'm here for Vermont Kitchen. I actually started two commercial kitchens in the Boston area, and I sold one already to help fund this kitchen. And then I'm in the process of selling our second one, who I have a business partner with. So we're hopefully closing a deal on that in the coming weeks. Um, so we've kind of gone over budget on our project, on this project, which I feel like always tends to happen. Um, so to date, our total expected expenditures are 133000 including our build-out and um, the purchase of the space. So we're at the mill building, um, on the back side of the mill building. And we have a few more renovations that we still need to do. So this grant money will go towards those renovations and some outstanding bills that we have on the space. And um, Vermont Kitchen, it will be the only commercial kitchen within a one hour, 45 minute radius of Woodstock. So it's really in need in Vermont. Um, so there's one up in Hardwick and that's not an ideal commute from Woodstock. So actually when I first moved here, I was driving to Boston using my other commercial kitchen for almost a year until we finally got this. Commercial kitchen ready. for what, is it catering? So caterers can work there, people who want to create products to sell wholesale in stores or at farmer's markets. We're limited in Vermont to the cottage food law, which says that a food business can only work out of their home if they have under $10,000 in sales. So that's very limiting. So if you want to grow your business past that, then you have to travel at Hardwick or you have to build out your own space. So this is a space where our business will be working and then other local entrepreneurs can also work out of the space. So our three primary goals for the project are to create a space where food entrepreneurs can come, make their product and sell to consumers, uh, to create a community where food startups can collaborate and grow with one another. So share resources, share store connections, share distributor connections, um, to bring more food startups and people to Woodstock, resulting in more jobs and financial pr prosperity within the community. <coughs> so we actually have one business that's about to sign on board from Massachusetts, and one of the founders wants to move up here too. Mm. So um, just trying to get more, because I have a, a good pull in the Boston area, so mm. hopefully bring some of those business up, businesses up this way. I've had a lot of people reach out to me saying, oh, how did you do it? I want to live in Vermont. Um, how did you make that happen? So making it possible for other people who want to do it. And then we also have one local business who wants to sign on board, and then two other local businesses who want to host cooking classes there. So we want to bring in the whole community by hosting different classes like a cooking class. Um, and then I also hosted food startup classes when I was in the Boston area, so teaching people who just had an idea for a food business. <laughs> all the pains and troubles I went through to get it started. So I started with $5,000 on Kickstarter, um, is how I started my business. So talking about all the pain points along the way, we just sold at farmer's markets, and then now we're in 50 plus stores. Mm -hmm. And then we're about to get into some larger grocery chains, so in the coming months. Um, so yeah, we'll hopefully be fully up and running by late July. I personally, for Nutty Life, already have our permit at that space, so we're already <coughs> operating out there. Um, and that's it. Yep. How, how many businesses, if you know, there's obviously some physical capacity and so forth, how many businesses could you handle if it were full? Yeah, so it, it depends on how much storage space people need and how many hours. Um, we, I've operated the other shared kitchens on like a Google calendar so people can see what hours are available. Um, technically, somebody could be in there any time of day. They could come at night. But, so just pick one of your two kitchens in Boston. What, what How many companies um, were involved in that? So one was up to 15 with the capacity that we weren't nearly at full capacity yet. And then our other one was at about 10, it's a smaller space. And how do those <laughs> compare in size to this one? Um, so this one is the same, about the same size as the larger kitchen. So it could Thank probably you. hold 25 to 30 businesses. And again, it depends on how big the business is. 
Um, your business is charge what? Per square foot? In your building, is that it? So we do uh, a contract based on how many hours they're going to use per month, oh, and see. then we charge extra for storage. So if somebody comes in and they only need a small amount of storage, they're not going to pay as much as somebody else who needs a, yeah. a significant amount yeah. of storage. Is that refrigeration as well? Yeah, we, we have a large walk-in cooler. Um, That's shared that by all of them? Yeah, yeah, yeah that will be shared. And what building is this? <coughs> the mill building, <coughs> so <coughs> it's the one that's... water treatment plant. Yeah. The Dr. Nottis. Okay. Mm -hmm. The brick. Yes. Really right. That's correct. Yeah, not or Discovery Bicycle right. Tours. Yeah. Or Discovery Bicycle <laughs> Tours used to be housed there. Yes. Mm -hmm. I our manufacturing information systems. Yes. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, See, so the people like that, I don't want to take a picture. Yeah. I'm just curious. The people who apply for space, are, are they like uh, somehow passed? Have they passed like? The Board of Health and... They, yeah, so every time a new business comes in, they'll have to, the Board of Health will come in and have an inspection for each individual business. And the comes. fire department and everybody else that gets involved? So we've business. already, we've already gotten like all that squared away with all of our permitting, but mm -hmm. for the individual businesses that come in, they do need to deal with the Board of Health and uh -huh. apply. So, uh, just one question: Have you, has anybody from the state actually helped you at all yet in terms of the Sustainable Jobs Fund or others? No. With grant yes. monies that might be available. No. Okay. Have you asked them? No. Yeah. All right. Allison's making a face. No, no, Is it a good or a bad face? There's, there's money. There's money. There's to support. This. There are funds yeah. available. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Well, I would like more. So talk about the legislative the law about the uh, ten thousand dollar. Maximum so, versus so Massachusetts, like what? What's the difference? So in Massachusetts, um, they have certain like certain businesses can work out of their home. I think their cutoff is a hundred thousand actually. So like a baker, I couldn't produce my product. Well, out yeah, we of could change that. <laughs> yeah, get out to the home. <laughs> I couldn't produce my my product yeah. out of my home because um, it's considered <coughs> hazardous. But people who bake can bake out of their homes. Um, well, any reason though, anybody from the audience know why limit it, how limit it, why that's so limited? It's more dirt in Vermont no. than Massachusetts. <laughs> Don't know, we just dealt with, the legislature just yeah. dealt with slaughterhouses uh, and yeah. you know, what you could do at your house, so why not cottage industries? Can, can it be there unlimited? I mean, do have to, is there a block of time that they're allowed to stay in? Um, so there's like tiers. So the lowest tier is somebody who wants 15 hours a month. I so see. they book it and say like, I oh, want to come in yes. Monday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Whatever, like maybe. Great. Great. It's cool. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. What stock comes in your hard work? That would be pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. In some ways. <laughs> right. Good. Right. Um, do you have um, uh, like a break-even? Uh, Scenario: How how many hours do you have to be subletting, or however you yeah. say it, <laughs> to, uh, make to the 133? Mm. Um, so 450 is the is the lowest tier. Um, so 450, 133, 450 a month. Uh -huh. So 133,000 divided by 450. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> 266. We have a guy in the Yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> and, and, and you mentioned four different companies that are already interested. Yeah, and then people who think so, the cooking classes will be an additional in source of income. Um, and we're going to do it in a collaborative way. I don't want to charge somebody like X dollars for to host a cooking class and then nobody shows up. So it's going to be a shared um, commission based thing. So you bring in people, we'll help promote it. It'll the community and then we'll both benefit from it. Everybody will benefit from it. So we'll get creative. It won't just cool. be the rent and you'll do other things too to get people involved. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you for your time. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you very much. All right, we have Woodstock Nursery School and then TV commercials is on deck. Hi Kelsey. Hello. How are you Charlie? Great, how are you doing? Good, nice to see you. So we do have your application. Tell us what you're doing. Great. My name is Kelsey Keith, and I'm the director and head teacher at the Woodstock Nursery School. And I'm here with Bonnie Badgwick, who is our president of the board. And I thank you very much for including us in being able to share our goal. So our goal is to sustain long-term growth in our upgraded space at the Little Theater. 
And we offer flexibility, strong community relationships, and a real focus on social emotional development. The children who represent our school are free to explore town resources, and this exposure creates and deepens relationships among community members and visitors. So I have five very brief <coughs> testimonials to share with you from some of our families. So the first testimonial is from a Plymouth mother, Amber Berkey, who stated, we initially chose the Woodstock Nursery School because of the flexibility. Our daughter has grown to love the community, activities, and routine. We are supportive of the teacher's desire to get the kids outside. And the second testimonial is from a Woodstock mother, Elizabeth Reeves, who stated, the Woodstock Nursery School's <coughs> philosophy to nurture social and emotional skills with structural play and community experience is very important to us. Multiple school and care options increases the relative attractiveness of Woodstock and gives parents flexibility to make choices based on changing family needs. And our third testimonial is from a Woodstock father, Samuel Siegel, who stated, all three of our children have distinct needs, learning styles and personalities, and for each of them, it has been refreshing to transfer them into the Woodstock Nursery School. At the end of the day, our children are happy, calm, ready to engage with us in a positive way, and usually have interesting stories to share about what they have been up to around town all day. And our fourth testimonial is from a Woodstock mother, Elizabeth Green, who also included a quote from her son, Robbie. When we asked our three-year-old what he thought of the Woodstock Nursery School, he said, my favorite parts are morning meeting, the books in the library, music class, taking field trips to Vail Field, and the mountain probably meaning Mount Peg or Mount Tom, and playing during free play. I think this answer sums up why we love the Woodstock Nursery School. And lastly, this testimonial is from a Pomfret mother, Emily Harrington, who stated, the Woodstock Nursery School is truly a special place. Our four-year-old son showed great reluctance to leave home, either to attend school or even to run errands or go to appointments. He would regularly resist even getting into the car. However, at the Woodstock Nursery School, he has developed the confidence to transition from home to school without fear or hesitation. Now he looks forward to days when he feels he is able to play with friends, walk to the playground, or do yoga exercises. Attending the Woodstock Nursery School has built his confidence, taught him to make friends, and helped him to grow into an enthusiastic learner and participant. He still has tough days, but they are much fewer and farther between. Thank you, the Woodstock Nursery School, for creating such a warm, loving, and comfortably structured environment in which our children can grow and thrive. So we, as the Woodstock Nursery School, believe that it's essential for young families to thrive here, and we hope that you continue to support us. Great. Uh, some questions that we might have. So you're going into the little theater as Rainbow is moving out and going to the <coughs> facility, right? Yes. So what's the timing on this? They move out September 1st, and we move in September 1st, and we start <laughs> two days later. Oh my. Wow. That's quick. Where are you now? We are in St. James. Um, are there, can, you, can you quantify how many additional spaces of capacity will this create, and how many jobs will it create? So we just added one job for a local teacher, and we have been getting more and more enrollment throughout. The summer is definitely our busiest time. So right now we are um, at a bigger capacity than we are currently, um, but we anticipate to get more children. You know, I'm not asking how many children are registering, I'm asking capacity. In other words, if, if you, I mean, because what we, in the past, we've given grants to, to increase the number of spaces available. Sure. So, so how many spaces are available today and how many would be available how many would be available if we didn't give you the money and how many would be available if we did? That's a good question. So we have a ten to one ratio. So it's ten children per one adult. And right now we have two teachers. Next year we'll have three. So that opens ten more spots. And is that is that third spot I guess how is that connected with the grant request? Because we are upgrading a space which means, um, I don't know if you okay. had a chance to look over yeah, I look, um, the but breakdown, but mostly it's for the space and um, being able to What do you mean you'll have more space at, at, this, at the uh, theater? Yes, exactly. And without the grant, you can't expand the space, and without the expanded space, you can't have the extra 10 places? 
Mm -hmm. So we need to be able to expand with the natural play playground setting, the kitchen, be able to maintain our programming with music together, yoga. Those, those things, those materials. things don't sound like expanding capacity. That's what I'm <coughs> asking. It sounds like more programs for the same. Like you had 20 kids, and now you have 20 kids that get yoga and music. Is it is, as opposed to we got 30 kids? I'm just trying to understand the the expansion of capacity. I think we've in the past said is a definite okay. benefit, mm -hmm. an economic benefit, because there are people who move here who can't move here because they don't have childcare. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm just trying to pin down. Well, you know, we don't. This is the wrong time to do it. But you during the right over the next month. No, 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 no. The time to do it is in the next month when we ask you more detailed questions. Just be prepared to ask. Sure. We're, we're going to try to figure out how how the funding would would expand the capacity. That's a critical question for us. Compared to where you are now right. and where you're going to be, how many mm -hmm. more kids can you actually take care of, given the space and the fit up? I, I think it's great of John to give you a little heads up about what you're going to be here with next time you come in, don't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, totally. So. <laughs> great. Any other questions for Kelsey? Right. Kelsey, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now we have TV commercials. Well, that's a, kind of a funny title on it, but <laughs> Nick Farrell, yes. Yeah. So we had a little preview of this at our last meeting. Yeah. Yes. And I have um, the, uh, I left the uh, proposal for Sally. Yeah, we I have, have copies for everyone. Right, we, we have, have additional yeah. format. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So <clears throat> I represent uh, 35 Woodstock businesses that are, we're asking the EDC to fund a 12 month program to um, a marketing program that would consist of videos to be shown on TV, on actually Comcast Spotlight TV. Each of the 35 individual Woodstock businesses <coughs> that signed up would have a 20 second commercial where they tell their story, what they do, what they sell, how long they've been in Woodstock, and why people should visit Woodstock. There'd be a 10 second tag showing the prominent features of Woodstock and inviting them to visit. Uh, our goal is to increase the amount of regional and local visitors to Woodstock. Um, basically, it'll be uh, the radius is 60 miles from the center of Woodstock, so most of Vermont and into New Hampshire. Um, so it's to strengthen Woodstock's economy so existing and new businesses flourish by encouraging regional visitors to shop, dine, and stay in Woodstock. We want to create an atmosphere of success so regional visitors might want to move here and maybe move their businesses here or a branch such as uh, Danford and uh, Worthy. Um, so this consists of 444 30 second commercials per month on five Comcast stations, CNN, Fox News, HGTV, Food Network, Weather Channel, and um, they cover uh, Woodstock, Lebanon, Claremont, Rutland, Middlebury, and so that's all in the proposal in any event. Um, we have a budget. Uh, so we, this has to, we would actually do the 35 commercials and get them running, which each business would have 10 commercials per month, so that each business Woodstock business would actually wind up with 120 commercials per year. That would be for the first six months. The second six months, a new commercial would be made. That's included in this budget. So we don't want to run the same commercial for 12 months. Like we have the summer and fall, and then we would have the winter, spring, into spring. Um, the uh, grant that we're asking for is um, 67500 for 12 months. Um, that would mean that there's 444 commercials per month. 30 second commercials and the businesses would get to keep the commercial or the video so to speak and they would use that for whatever social media uh, YouTube Facebook they would be able to use those and then they would be getting another one uh, after the first of the year so that's that's the plan okay. questions for I have one question um, I wonder if you can quantify the difference between the target audience um, for this type of um, TV commercials versus current our current expenditures that we're already spending a decent amount of money on marketing that benefits all Woodstock businesses via email, 
websites and social media. So what's, what's, is there, can you quantify? Yeah, I mean, to, to How it's better or different or? The, the people that I've spoken to, the experts on this, you know, they feel that, you know, people see, they want the stories. They want the stories, they want to see the actual person. This would be the actual person in their store, shop, whatever business, explaining what they do, why they do it, and, and that's, that's what they're really interested in. Yeah, I, I guess what I'm saying is that, we, that that's already being done on our it's website. It's not being done on videos. It's not being well, done on videos. Well, I got a question. I'll have the, the, the yeah. video. Reuse of that video. Um, that's that's going to be possible. That's going to be possible to use on the website. Yeah, website. Okay, well, we uh, we'll uh, you'll own it and be able to you'll distribute be on, it. On it. Yes, in many ways. It. Okay, that's important. And use it in many ways exactly. Um, for example, there's um, 189,720 uh, Comcast subscribers between here and Montpelier, Middlebury, and Hanover, whatever, and. Uh, Actually, um, what what they're saying is that this would this would cover basically all of Vermont and New Hampshire, but they would actually see see the the, the town. It, it's a twenty second commercial of the actual business. Then it's a 10 ten percent ten uh, second, second. ten second commercial of the prominent features of Woodstock and say, and inviting them to come. We're really trying to get the people that want to come for a day. You know, the regional person who said, let's just take a ride over and take a look. They might see one shot in that video that they like. That, that's an interesting thing. This was told to me by many of the 35 businesses. Jiver, for example. They see one shop that they like and they decide to come. Then they're here for the day. And they walk around and go to the other shops. Yeah, I guess what I'm asking is, is there a way to quantify the difference between, like, the same video, right? So, for example, we have an Instagram page and we have Facebook efforts that are already happening that are posting photos and videos and interviews with shopkeepers and people who have moved well, up here recently. Well, you have interviews with shopkeepers? I'm not, I mean, I'm not, I, I believe What so. shopkeepers? I, I haven't seen anything like that. Okay. I mean. Um, sure. I, m maybe the focus has been more on interviewing people who have moved up business owners. I'm certain that there are interviews with business owners. Yeah, I don't know about shop owners, owners, but there have been business owner interviews yeah. focused on how people move to Woodstock, how to make it work on logistical levels. All I'm asking is if there's a way to quantify the difference in the media, television versus the internet. Well, <coughs> according you mean to the outcomes. Yes, the outcomes. Exactly. The according outcomes. To, you're looking for metrics. Yes, yeah, metrics. Yeah. Exactly. Like, what do is there a way that we can find out what is mean? more or less successful? Who what like. All right, I know is we had sixty-seven thousand dollars to spend on search engine marketing. Seems to be really killing it. Uh, that's one argument. To yes. Me, but the point. The, I'm, I'm just asking about the difference in, in the the. Well, for the for, for example, there uh, people spend around ten hours a day watching TV. Watching TV, and that's that's what, and it, they'll, they'll see these videos. They'll see four hundred and forty-four videos a month <laughs> of Woodstock. Yeah. Yeah, around 10, that's what, yeah, 10, that's hours what 10 hours a day, the average, that's what they're saying. Oh, I'm sorry, I think uh, this will be the this subject be, yeah, of the follow-up. Follow yeah, yeah. 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 is really trying to come up yeah. with some of those metrics and trying to do it, so. I have one question, just uh, the 67,000, who, who, who is it you'll be hiring? Who, who would be hiring? We have a TV production company that we use for, for who the tours. Where they found? Uh, it, it's right in the proposal that I had. Oh, right. Just, Bear with me, who is that? I have to look it up exactly. Oh, okay. His, his name is Andrew, but he's, he's doing mine. His name mine. is Andrew. Well, it's a company in Rutland. He's been doing mine for a long time. He I did the whole town of Rutland. Pardon? I know who he is. Yeah. yeah. He's very, very good. And then you have an ed somebody has to edit it. Someone has to go in and interview the uh, store owner. I mean, this is my, my daughter does this for a living for 15 years. It's very, very super successful. And she does it for countries. We just came back from Geneva. She did it for the whole town of Geneva. And it, she was hired by the Swiss Travel Bureau. So um, is the Economic Resource Committee feel comfortable following up with more details with? Oh, yeah. Can I just yeah. Oh, yeah, Larry. One brief question. Um, is there, has there been any discussion amongst the 35 about putting a little skin in the game, like each, like $500 mm -hmm. or something like that? No. Okay. There's no discussion about that. Simply because, I mean, the EDC's been here since 2015. There hasn't been really any 
that type of marketing for the downtown Woodstock. We haven't seen any changes in the business community. We're, we're there every single day. You can squint, but I, I can tell you, we're there every single day working, and we don't see any increase in sales or anything that you're talking about. With all the, I know Instagram people look at that and whatever, but this is actually appealing to regional people throughout the state of Vermont. They're watching TV, they're going to see it on CNN, and, and something might catch their eye. It's a lot of, not everyone goes on. The, and, and, and if we have a little bit more time, I think I'd be able to push back on that. But we don't have Leave that yeah. to our yes. next meeting. We, exactly. We only allocated a certain amount of time yeah. tonight, unfortunately. But bear in mind that the 35 Woodstock businesses that signed up for this, they know all about it. Well, who wouldn't sign up? They, there's, who wouldn't sign up? Who wouldn't sign up? Yeah. It's free. It's free. It's free. It's not free. It's paying $350 to have the commercial made. Oh, that's new information. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah, I understand. That yeah. that yeah. that would be funded. My understanding is we're each paying three hundred and fifty dollars for the commercial that we will. No, well, that's that's different. That's, that's not what the proposal is. That's, 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 that's not the proposal. Mm -hmm. no, folks, that was that's not right. Okay, so we, we we'll follow up and thinking that anyway. And the committee. So that's, that's important information that's right important. Yeah. Yeah. for the next meeting. That, 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 that's 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 pretty important. important. Right. We should continue yeah. to understand that. That's great. Can I just add one thing to mine? I, my husband would be uh, amazed that you know one of the key elements of marketing is explaining what the benefit of your proposal is, and I failed to do that. And the benefit of our proposal, the jazz on a Sunday afternoon, uh, to do it every week is it becomes a pattern. People start to know. There is jazz going on every Sunday afternoon in Woodstock. They make plans for that. They come over, they have dinner, et cetera. And it starts at the end of May, would go right through to a Columbus Day weekend. So it, it's a, a broad period of time that encourages local people as well as visitors from far away to come to Woodstock for a day and to browse and shop and eat. Thank you. Yeah. Apologize for that. <laughs> You would, you would be proud that you did that. I'm sorry? You would be proud that you did that. Yes. Yeah. 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 I practically feel like I have a marketing degree after <laughs> two years of uh, reading all of his papers. So. Okay, so uh, thank you. That concludes the grant presentation overview. So thank you very much, everyone. Uh, we are going to move into a next item, which is discussion of EDC objectives. You're certainly welcome to stay. If, uh, and it's very interesting, I think, to us uh, and to the town. So that's where we're going. And Mr. Spector has printouts because he doesn't have the technology for the projector. We agreed we would be a digital committee, but the projector is locked up. So we're an analog committee first. Okay. For the next hour. Yeah, All right. And uh, we might be able to post this on a website. After it's already posted. Powerful. These doc, everything that Fantastic. you're seeing is already posted. All the proposals are already on the website. I think that's a, maybe that's not enough. Just I think it's probably enough. So, for those of you for whom PowerPoint is the lifeblood of your existence, you'll be happy to see these slides. Um, on May 13th, some of you came to the special meeting, which was really the first half of this discussion. And what I'm going to do is summarize briefly what we concluded at that meeting, um, and then extend the discussion into tonight. None of this is cast in stone. Um, the meeting on May 13th was largely, almost entirely, just a discussion among EDC members. That was by design. We had never really talked about this among ourselves. Today is an opportunity for others to add in your voices. We would then go to so, then consider what happens tonight and soon, maybe immediately in the next month or so, go to the select board and tell them, here's what we think our priorities should be and how we should go about achieving them. On, on the bottom, there are two slides per page, so if you look at the page numbers, Page one, I'm just going to quickly summarize. If you had to leave right now, here's what we would be saying in the next half hour. At the May 13th special meeting, the EDC members broadly agreed on a set of four priorities, and I'll go over what those are in a minute. And those priorities have not significantly changed from 2016. 
when we laid out our priorities and they were approved by the select board. Um, we also agreed to organize ourselves in subcommittees, which is partially how we're organized now, but those subcommittees would align with, those, with the four priorities. Um, there were some suggestions made as to how to improve our process. We're not going to talk about that tonight. You know, better, we need to have better budgeting. We need to have better uh, follow-up on you know, checking on how the impact of certain projects did after the fact. Um, those were really good ideas. And there were a couple of areas that were left unresolved, a very important one and very relevant to what we just went through over the last hour is how to handle community grants, which typically are smaller projects that come to us from the community, just like they did in the last hour. Um, and there are several different ideas for how we should be handling that. Oh, sorry, Lynn. Sally, you, you have a copy of um, It would be helpful to get input tonight from, from what we discussed last time. And so I'll summarize that in a minute and then just open it up and ask you for reactions. And then we would spend some time tonight, 15, 20 minutes, talking about some of the unresolved issues. And I think that there were four important ones. There may have been a few others. Should grants that fit into the four priority areas be handled by the respective subcommittees? For example, the proposal tonight on um, home share would clearly fit into the housing subcommittee, which doesn't exist today, but would be one of our priorities. Rather than have, you know, should that grant, rather than doing this, go right to the housing committee, they're going to compare it to other housing initiatives that they have, or should we continue to have what I'll call a generic grant process that, that, that we have today? How should we handle grants that fall outside the four priority areas? And there are going to be some. Uh, the marketing grant, for example, falls right into one of our priority areas, marketing. Some of the other grants are a little bit further afield. We've approved lots of grants <laughs> like that. Um, how do we handle grants that fall outside the four priority areas if we're getting clearer about the focus on those four priorities, which we all said we wanted to do? Should we set an annual funding limit for each of the four areas, or should we be more flexible? And this is really a, an internal EDC question. How do we communicate? Who should be responsible for communicating and engaging with the community on behalf of the EDC, if anyone? There was some suggestion that perhaps we don't need to do that, that if we do good work, it will handle itself. Those were sort of the four issues that we didn't particularly go into depth or agree on, and we'll try to deal with some of them tonight. And then the next step at some point soon will be to go to the select board with whatever we've decided here and say, here's how we'd like to proceed going forward and get their approval. Okay, that's, if you have to leave now, that's, you've heard most of it. On the top of page two are the four priority areas. And I'll summarize them quickly and then just open it up to see if people think that we've got it right. And again, the, the, the really relevant thing, if you go back and look, and we did this a little bit at the meeting on May 13th, if you go back and look at the documents from, from the founding, well, this is founding number two, right? There was a founding earlier, but between uh, May of 2015 and December of 2016, there were a lot of discussion about what the priority should be. The words were different, the format was a little bit different, but it wasn't that different from what we're now, again, proposing. We're really proposing to just stick to our guns. We just haven't been perhaps doing that 100%. So the four priority areas, or the five, I guess, are marketing Woodstock, one of the proposals tonight, and we've been doing a lot of that. Expanding housing and what I'm going to call related services. Child care would fit into that, I think. Improving physical amenities. The examples here are the revitalization project, the river trail, Teagle's Landing, the flower baskets. Supporting businesses and the business environment. Storefront incentives we've done. Uh, business policies to encourage economic development, which we haven't really done. Yeah. And then fifth is supporting community initiatives, the community grant program. And uh, by, I don't know what the right word is, by legislation, the, the wording that formed the, the EDC and the options tax specifically says community projects. We don't exactly know what that means, but we, I think we interpret it to be just what we've been doing, which is smaller projects that come from the community. So those are the five areas of priority, and I think we also discussed organizing ourselves around this. We already have a marketing committee. Um, we have two teams that are looking at physical amenities. Those team, the one is the revitalization team and, um, and the other is the river trail. We could combine them or we could keep having them operate as two teams under one bucket. It doesn't really matter. But the idea then would be to form two other teams, one related to housing and related services and one related to supporting businesses in the business environment and to operate as subcommittees. And each of those subcommittees, the idea was, we agreed on this, I think, 
was to have EDC members and community members, passionate people who are passionate about housing or people who are passionate about physical environment or people who are passionate about policy. So the and which is how the marketing committee, Courtney, you and Julia are leading that with Beth and a colleague of Beth's from the chamber and a few other people also that are not EDC members who are experts in marketing. So that that's sort of a model for for how this might work. So let me just pause there. Maybe just first ask the EDC members: Is this an accurate uh, description of where we thought we got to? <laughs> yes. um, are there any comments about you know things that we? that are on this list that don't belong there, or things that are really important that aren't on the list that do belong there. Okay. Yeah, there's the concept of the EDC supporting recurring expenses. I didn't hear you Sorry. About you. Yeah, that was, that was also, I think, I think generally agreed on. I think the way we did it, we said it, maybe this is my own way of saying it, but we want to do bigger things. Some bigger things involve doing things over multiple years. So, and so we would not be opposed to doing things over multiple years if they were bigger things. What if they're not bigger things, but they're important things? Well, it, okay. So if they were, if they were in the four priority area. So I, I guess the simple answer is we would not. I, I, I don't. I don't think we would be opposed to doing recurring things. If they certainly, if they were in the four priority. Sure. Yeah, I think some of those things are looked at kind of separately over here, and then there's a bigger. Pot for we haven't had any proposals yeah. remotely big and recurring. Not right. Not a single one. We've had we've approved 40 proposals. We've probably had 30 or 20 others, maybe 15. We've not had. I'm talking about a million. You know, it's a million and a half dollars to to support the building of 40 housing units, and we're going to take out a mortgage and pay it off over 10 years. We haven't had those proposals. By the way, I'm not blaming anybody. I think we think we have to, the reason why we want to start a housing committee is maybe the housing committee can work with some residents to, to come up with that. We're taking time to figure out what the priorities are. So. Yeah, well, I'm, talking about, I'm talking about, I'm talking about things, smaller things. Like the flower like pots. The, the flowers, the lights, yeah. year round, have a big impact, don't cost that much money, but they are every single year. Yeah. Or even the, even the fireworks. Yeah. Uh, if, if the EDC decide to recommend yeah. that, uh, that be supported on a yearly basis. I would Those say, are kind of recurring. Yeah, I would I say mean. that, well, let's take an example of the fireworks. I think the fireworks probably would fit into the fifth category, supporting community initiatives. It isn't really housing. It's, I mean, you could argue that it's marketing. If we, if we paid, right, so, so if we, I don't want to, I don't want to opine. I want to just point something out. If we pay $4,000 for, let's consider the fireworks to be marketing. I mean, I want to go to the fireworks. We pay for the four thousand dollars for fireworks. Do we take it from the sixty-seven thousand dollars for the different kind of marketing, or do we, or do we take it from which bucket do we take it from? So I think what this will force us to do, and what the role of the EDC will be, is to adjudicate between the five buckets, and to sort of say, you know, the housing team is saying this, and the physical infrastructure team is saying that, and the marketing team is saying this. And the community grants, which are important, are saying that. <coughs> okay. B but what we want to do, I think, and what we've been asked to do, it's not just the EDC that wants to do bigger things. We've been asked to do bigger things. I think we're going to run in soon. We're in a situation now where we have a surplus of funds. I think what we envision is that we have a scarcity of funds because what, we're doing what, bigger John? things. That we have a scarcity of funds. Yeah. That's what we envision. Until we have a scarcity of funds, I think we, personally, I think we could do recurring things, but I, th I hope we have a scarcity pretty soon. Jo? Um, I've always viewed this fund of money as an opportunity to be able to respond to bigger things. And maybe we can do some recurring things, but I would hope it would always be a very small part of the budget. I'd hate the EDC to, to just create another budget like the town budget, and then you have no money to support any new initiatives. Right. So we, we talked about, for instance, an idea of if, if a lot of affordable housing could be built, if $100,000 of the EDC funds could be dedicated for a number of years, would that make sense? Yes. Right. And so, so that leaves... So yeah. I'm, I'm thinking of a, a budget that gets flower baskets, lights, this, that. And before you know it, you've got many, many things that cost $5,000 each, and you've eaten up a third of yeah, your budget. Yeah, just yeah. Away, though. That's, yeah. that's kind of what's, what we, we saw way things the way it was going, and that's why we kind of started talking about that. Yeah. Yeah. 
what do I tell you, John, what this has done for me, I mean, through that whole meeting that we had um, the last time we met, I only took one note. And I showed my case, and it just one word said focus. And I think one of the problems we've had as a commission is to stay focused. And I think one of the reasons why we have trouble staying focused is because we have a, our thought process has been scattered over a lot of different things. This, I think, helps organize stuff and enables to foc these subcommittees to focus on what what their duties are or what their agenda is. I think that's the way I see it. Let's be generous and say we focus. We focus. Yeah. And if I might add another way to look at the scattered, I don't disagree with what you're saying, but I Never would say do. that, um, <laughs> that it, another way of looking at it is that we have uh, expended effort in various ways and now we have a clearer idea of yeah. what is and is not more effective when it comes to economic development. Um, on a broader scale, and that will enable us to focus with more confidence and precision on larger projects. Um, I think also in conversations that we've had about exactly what Jill says about um, encumbering funds, uh, the thing that John said to me that really helped clarify it for me is that if there's another um, town entity that should, if it's something that a town should customarily be paying for, then the economic development, a proactive fund that is intended to look past <coughs> yearly budgets should not be paying for it, right? So something like the sidewalks, for example, that customarily comes into a town's yearly budget plan that is that benefits everyone in the community. It doesn't have direct impact on economic development per se, so the economic funds should look more forward than that. I would just say one, I'm going to call on you in one second, I would just say one other thing, Jeff. I think that to date, it, it probably, we probably don't have a great argument to date for not funding, for not saying we'll fund the flower pots every year, or we'll fund the fireworks every year, or we'll fund all, these are all things that are good, and that they benefit the town. And so why not, we have the money, why not, why not pay for those? Where, and I think uh, until we, uh, the old, there's only one good reason to not pay for the flower pots or the fireworks. is because the money can be better used for some other bigger project that can have a bigger impact. And until we have that, I think we should continue to pay for the fireworks and the flower pots. What this structure is designed to try to do is to come up with, is not to not pay for the fireworks, is to come up for projects that most of us agree ought to be paid for before the fireworks because they'll have a bigger impact. And we don't know if we can do that. We think we can. We think the areas that that exists in is marketing, like this proposal, um, or perhaps I mean, <coughs> some uh, expanding housing and related services, et cetera, and these other priorities. So I think it's up to us, all of us as a town, we have to be proactive and lead it, to see whether we can do what we're being asked to do, is, which is to come up with big things that will have an impact. If we do, I think we're probably going to mostly, not entirely, but mostly put the funds towards those things. And it may mean that between the flower pots and the fireworks, the fireworks doesn't get the funding and the flower pots does because we only have a limited amount of money because we're spending $100,000 a year on housing, which everyone agrees is going to have a bigger impact than the flower pots. So, so I think that we, we shouldn't be here saying we're not going to spend money on the flower pots. We should until we should, and we are, by the way, on the lights and the flower pots, until we have something that's better than that. I think we think we can come up with, we together, not us alone, can come up with bigger projects <coughs> will really have a bigger impact. And when we do, I think we'll, we won't have a problem. We'll all agree that we should spend it on that. We'll just wish we had more money. So I should first in Yes, I, I guess I don't know if this is the right time to introduce it because I don't, or not introduce, it's not the right word. Um, one of my questions would be for the EDC to get into what I consider the real estate business, doesn't seem like the, you know, if you were funding a, a say, a 40 housing unit in the town, it would seem to me the more the, the, more beneficial role for the EDC, which would be less expensive as well, would be to find uh, developers who are willing to do the investment of funding housing and renting housing and b selling condos for the town, et cetera, to get people here so there's more housing. 
rather than, as I said, being in the no, no, real estate business. That, that's what we meant. I, we would never, we're not going to own, no, we meant in partner, all of this is in partnership with okay, other people. And we would only be providing a thin slice. many ideas being talked about. This is a process, and all those ideas fall into that process and, and get deciphered <laughs> from that. So I think yeah. we're just... Yeah, I'm just using it as an example, okay. Okay. And, and, yeah. and not the example that you were saying. <laughs> I would, okay. I, and it was, it's housing. It's not my that specific okay. idea. That's just a random idea. Maybe it's a terrible idea. Um, Wendy Spector, um, in terms of sort of this push and pull with repetitive community projects, it seems to me it might make sense to sort of allocate a percentage of your annual budget to community projects. What I'm thinking um, that was alluded to before is that our town has a tax base and we have a budget and that goes to fundamental things like sidewalks, roads, schools, all those kinds of things. But it doesn't really cover things like flower pots and fireworks, which are um, enhancements. Uh, and they're not essential, but they're enhancements that benefit everybody and do draw people in. But they're um, not big, but they're cumulatively important. So instead of necessarily doing piecemeal, how do, do we have money for this or that, if you set aside a percentage of your total annual take, which is going to fluctuate from year to year, um, then at least you have some sort of cap. Okay. Other general comments about either the prior the specific priorities or the process for getting to them? Anything we've left out or anything that's on here that you think shouldn't be? Oh, no, I have um, envisioned what one you just said, hoping that eventually you would come to the, the percentages situation because it depends on what you take in every year what you can give to people. Well, I felt so. I mean, you think, just look at the website. It needs to be supported every year. <coughs> the website. You can't just build a website and just let it sit. It needs to be supported every year. So same thing. Sorry, I'm your hand up. Sorry, I'm Tony. I live next door at the Blue Horse. Uh, just a quick question. The, the marketing that goes on for the town everything the budget's driven by the meals and room tax correct yes so is there a goal or objective through the marketing to increase the occupancies at all the bed and breakfast and the, there is to yes. drive as I noticed your comments before about the metrics around the marketing so there's some specific things that you look at to try and drive I don't think there's any specific numbers but you know we, they, we look at it Every, every time we meet and, and observe whether or not there's been an increase in the monies that we get, the which means yeah. right. something's working somewhere. Well, it, it may, and, and the reason I ask is because driving people to Woodstock and the Woodstock Inn is clearly prominent. It's, you know, and it provides the majority of the support for what the EDC does. But is there also an effort to help the smaller bed and breakfast to kind of show the whole picture and drive our occupancy rates up, which also help to much smaller percentage, but it does bring in additional. Yeah, certainly. And, and, and we've, you know, our marketing, the, the, um, the website's strategy has, uh, and it, it's been, it's only been live for about a year and three months. So we've been honing it over that year and three months, but the effort has been to um, spotlight specific either um, restaurants, hotels, right. venue, venue people, individuals, um, so that businesses. In, businesses in creative ways, so that it can that, both yeah. attract visitors, but also be seen not as um, distinctly advertising, right? right? So it's more like advertorial type work, so that it might be picked up. The, the goal in that is that it might be picked up by other social media people, right. so it's not seen as pure yeah. advertising. Therefore, the legs it, it gets more earned impressions. So the the, the only af advertising effort has been really been before we, we did the PR firm, and then now the, the website. And the only thing driving the website really now is the blog and the social media. Um, because yeah, email. what's that? Oh, any any email. email. So we don't have any paid ads out there in Google, Bing. Um, Yahoo, um, which would be another step to look, look at and give us a say. So that really the only moving parts are those, 
Yeah. Those other, otherwise, it's just purely SEO. And what other people yep. pick up. I mean, I don't know if you saw the the article yesterday of the woman who went from Burlington to Twin Farms yes. into Woodstock and yeah. the UK, I believe. Right? Yeah. 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 So we've been yeah. we've been focusing on getting earned impression, like basically encouraging people to look twice at X Y Z. So. We have a new cocktail feature, right? Which does a double double duty of you know, th this is more information that anyone needs. Yeah. Yeah. We're aiming to do double duty. Right. It's, uh, it's important yeah. to know that the image, yeah, is the big driver, but it only has so many rooms. Right. So if if we're increasing uh, the amount of money we're taking in, they can only contribute. They have a maximum at some point. Right. So it's got to be coming from somebody else. Right. right, which is great. Sell out all day long. That'd be yeah. fantastic. Tony, there, <laughs> yeah. there, are, there, 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 there are statistics. There are <laughs> website statistics published by the on our ADC <laughs> site every oh, month, oh, including okay. for tonight's Thanks. meeting. I'll check them out. So. Thank you. Uh, okay. yeah. You said that the yeah. um, rooms and meals tax has increased yeah. the revenue, mm -hmm. but that also includes the Shire and 506 and uh, the Woodstock Inn. So if those places increased, that increase could be specifically to them. It doesn't mean that the town in general, B&Bs, the restaurants, the businesses in town increased. If you look at the, if you could look at that, I don't know if you can, but if you could look at what did they, what's their increase over 2017, what percentage did they increase? That could represent the whole 6% increase. But the town, I can tell you, <coughs> this is not only my store, and my store's not doing badly, but I've been around to the, uh, lots of the stores and businesses in town. No one is doing great, and they haven't done great for many years. And so all of the advertising you're putting out, social media, and that's all fine, but it hasn't affected the downtown Woodstock merchants hardly at all. Do we have time now for me to push back? <laughs> no, no, this is to take input. It's uh, right. Yeah. Uh, uh, Jack? I, I have a question about uh, your new organization that you're talking about. So let's say the marketing committee is going to meet on its own, separate yeah. from the Holy DC. It does now. It does now. It does now. Is that, so that's where like Nick's proposal would be discussed. Exactly. Is that advertised as to, to the public as to yeah. when that's meeting and where? I, I think going, <coughs> Yeah, we, well, I think going forward it would be. Certainly, certainly for the discussion, if we were to operate this way, certainly the intent would be, you know, where Nick wouldn't have just five minutes to talk about it, you'd have 35 minutes. And other people could come. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, and that's what I wanted. That's what I would envision. I, if you go in that direction, of that course. would be great to, so that you know, yeah. you know, oh yeah, I want to go attend that. Yeah. Right. Exactly. The purpose, yeah. This is not to make it more also request to be a part of it, too, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So we can't, it's constituted, I think, with two, two four, six, seven, eight yes. members? Yes. Yeah. So we agreed with the chamber to create what is two members of the ADC, two members of the chamber, uh, two at large members, and both the coordinator for the ADC and the executive director of the chamber. Yes. So that's who's on it now. Uh, so there's some really good marketing minds. There on are. Yeah. Yeah. Could I ask a question with regard to scheduling of the meetings? Because you know, if if they're consistent as the EDC meetings generally are, then people can plan to be there because you know we all have other things going on that we can't change. So if they were all of the committees met the same night, for example, everybody would know that this is the night the committees are going to meet, and if I want to attend that, I can be there, rather than hope that you catch the announcement and that you plan to be there. Thank you. Yeah. Well. Well, as we work towards formalizing our committee structure, we'll have to address that issue as to regularity of the meetings. The revitalization committee has, for the most part, been meeting Tuesdays at 10.30. Every Tuesday. Yep. Like and enough. we've been In meeting. In the morning? Yep. Okay, it's my business night. Yeah. And my gallery, Tuesday at 10.30. Oh, right. I think we, that's one of the things we have to operationalize. Yeah. The intent is to... The intent here is, is not to make a secret. It's to op is to keep it just as open, right. but to specialize it. It's, right. that's right. it. it's yeah. just to specialize it, really, yeah. to yeah. keep it as open as this. But all right, other other thoughts about priorities or process? I guess. Okay, I'm gonna. There's a, there's other things here, but to some extent, Charlie, the other things are sort of inside baseball. They are. Like how should you know, and, and it's, a, it's a little bit about how we should organize ourselves, and who the people are, and so forth. So I'm gonna I'm gonna say that that at the strategic level, I think we've 
now we've got some input from the community and we've agreed. Um, and we've also talked about some important process things about the regular scheduling, um, setting aside a percentage as a way to set the budget, um, thinking about non-essential, I'll use your words, Monday, non-essential enhancements, and Jill, you were endorsing this versus essential things that the town would pay for. So those, so I think we can push this forward one further step. We still have some questions <coughs> internally, I think, to resolve. So are you then suggesting uh, that we adopt this uh, as a strategic plan to form and uh, present to the select board? Is that what you're suggesting? I, I think, well, I'm, not, I'm just wondering, we may need to clarify a few couple, a couple of things. Maybe we can just have some discussions over the next few days. I, I certainly I wouldn't change anything that we've agreed on. I'll make one suggestion. At some point, because you can keep changing it, at some point you make it a working document yeah. that gets accepted now, but it always... But let's do that then. Yeah. So I would propose that we present what we know now to the select yeah. board for their endorsement. There was a motion on the floor. Is there a second? Motion. Second. No, he just motioned it. He moved. Second. Second, yes. <laughs> make sure that you record John Spector, do you, do you know <laughs> it's only <laughs> second? Only only second. Uh, Courtney. Uh, that's low, L O W E. So we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion on this? Uh, only to say, John, thank you for the yeoman okay. service and putting this all together. Wait. Uh, Wait, do we have to vote? I mean, yes, and so all oh, those yeah. in favor, uh, please say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. Thank you. Uh, beautiful. So we move on to our next item. Was uh, We have Number six, seven, and eight. Uh, six and seven of the financial report, and seven is the coordinated report, which have been submitted to EDC members ahead of time uh, in the drop box. And so our intent was not to belabor the meeting beyond a reasonable doubt, um, but to get the, uh, if there's any new updates on those, uh, we have the financial report first. Any updates from that? No. no. And on the EDC coordinator's report, is there any updates from that? Additions, deletions. Only that I came in seventh in the park run race. Uh, we just went right now. Yes, nice yes. Job. Yeah, uh, there were eight runners. Are there any other updates from the committee sub reports? Um, yes. We finally get a uh, uh, quantity from num number from. Uh, Jack Rossi on what it would cost to uh, upgrade Teagle's Landing. Uh, I don't know if it would be appropriate to submit it now or somewhere, but we'd like to get started as soon as possible. We have, we did get approval from uh, the select board to buy pots. We've uh, negotiated uh, who's going to water them, who's going to clean up, where they're, where they're going to go, but how they're going to be transported during the off seasons. So uh, the pots are going to be ordered within the next week or so. The uh, benches have been ordered. We're waiting for delivery. Maybe this, in this, this week and the next week, uh, they will come assembled. Uh, we'll pick them up in my pickup truck, and they, or they may drop them right here at the green, and we'll distribute them with my truck. Uh, the next They're not all assembled shipping. Are there some assembly required? Or they uh, who will they tell that though? Oh, they're going to assemble. They're going to assemble. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and um, the next big item on, on our schedule, uh, once we get the pots really line, uh, organized and ready to go, is um, trash and recycle. You know, what are we going to do about what we have now and how to improve upon it? Uh, what we plan to do is bring a few examples of what we think might fit uh, and bring it before the trustees first, see how they feel about it, <coughs> and if they approve, then uh, we'll move on to here, see if we can get the money, and then we'll go to the select board. So that's next on our so list of things to do. So you've worked out the bump outs? We've worked out the bump outs. Okay. We had bump outs. Bump outs, yeah. So there is something. It was a good process. <laughs> So does, of course it was. Yes. Does the select board then, because uh, they tabled it, right? Tabled what? They met Tuesday. Okay. And when and granted the bus forward. Granted the Okay. Yeah. Okay. So our grant request, I think, was sixteen thousand dollars for the bump house. Yes. Right. Yes. All right. So that now, was and now we've got another grant proposal 
And I don't know if this would be the right time to put it for the money we need to finish up on Teagle's Landing. Well, it's late in the evening. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. I know. That's why I, I asked. Yeah, if, we, yeah, it's well, your time. Need to submit a proposal. Yeah. yeah. So, so uh, we look forward to that next month. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, any other updates? Because you can, did include in your note about the river trail, right? River trail. Um, I don't remember. Uh, it's just moving forward. It's going to conservation commission, I think, right? We we did go to the conservation commission, and they they want a formal presentation. Great, great. So the the map that was made and then amended by the consultants um, to move the trail off of the town's land where they actually apply biosolids from the sewer plant. So that's we're trying to go through with that. Any other updates from committees? No? All right, moving on to the next item of business. We have before us old business, new business, setting the July date, and then an executive session to discuss personnel matters. So any old business? Seeing not any new business. Mm -hmm. And moving right along <laughs> to setting the July meeting date, which, uh, when is July 4th? Thursday. Thursday. OK, so that's why we're talking about it. So is, uh, how is July 11th for people? Is that going to work out? Are people actually here? But the only question I have is that we have so many applicants that are looking forward to getting an it's answer true. that waiting another week is just, it's just a long time. So bump it up a week instead of bumping it back. Well, now we you can't are. do it. We can't do it a week ahead because it's left board schedule uh, meeting on short term rentals for the Thursday before the July 4th. So for July 3rd. Monday, oh, Monday the first. Uh, June 27th. June 27th. Which is the no, I was just thinking the day before. <laughs> <laughs> what about Michael's idea? Monday the first. Monday the first. Monday the first. We have a we have a nomination oh. Monday the first. Because remember, the 27th is claimed already. Right. That's what it is. Okay. Monday the first. I like that. Monday the first. Monday the first has been uh, promoted. Can we send out a doodle poll? No. If everybody's here. Yeah. Okay. Monday the first. Good. Yeah. Works for me. Works for me. Great. Okay. I can't do it. Third can't do it. She's the one that does. Okay. Thank you. July first, the next meeting of the select of the um, Woodstock Economic Development Commission will be July first at seven p.m. in this room, subject to availability. My birthday is a couple of days after the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> we'll bring you something. We'll bring you something. Yeah. So then um, oh. we have executive session. Oh, yeah. So I, we do have an issue uh, to discuss in executive session about uh, personnel matters and contracts. So I would uh, entertain a motion to go into executive discussion, this session to discuss personnel matters. So excuse me, July the 1st at 7 o'clock. Right? Yes. What time? Yeah. I've got some. See you, Ray. Right. Thank you. Is there a motion? Can we need to vote on that motion? Yeah. 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 We have a motion and a second to go into executive session. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Can we take a little break and get a quarter or something like that? Yep. Yeah.